Scotland is a land of myth, of legend. It has seen its fair share of triumph and tragedy, and in the course of its history has produced many a ghost. Settle in for the stories of three spectres that are said to haunt the great castle of Stirling. Stirling Castle is one of the largest and most important castles in Scotland, both historically and architecturally. The castle sits atop Castle Hill, a crag or rocky hill. It is surrounded on three sides by steep cliffs, giving it a strong defensive position. The first record of Stirling Castle dates from around 1110, when King Alexander I dedicated a chapel there. Later, King William I formed a deer park to the southwest of the castle, but after his capture by the English in 1174, he was forced to surrender several castles, including Stirling and Edinburgh Castle, under the Treaty of Falaise. There is no evidence that the English actually occupied the castle, and it was formally handed back by Richard I of England in 1189. Our first ghost is that of a Highlander. Highlanders are folk who come from the highlands of Scotland, the most remote and mountainous part of the country. The ghost of this man is said to be the most active in Stirling Castle. He has been seen by both staff and visitors alike, and his apparition usually appears wearing full traditional Highland costume, that of kilt and all. He has been mistaken on occasion for a tour guide, but when approached, he ignores the living, walks away and disappears, no doubt shocking those who place eyes on him. He was, however, captured on camera. In 1935, during some preparation for building work at the castle, an architect snapped a picture of the spectre. The image has not been modified or tampered with, as he also appears on the original negative of the photograph. Our second ghost tale is that of the Green Lady. Our story begins in 1562. It is the year Mary, Queen of Scots, returned to Stirling and to Scotland after two decades' residence in France and following the death of her young husband, Francis, who was King of France. The Green Lady is believed to have been a serving girl who was hired by the Queen. She was a simple Highland lass, but she is said to have a special gift, the power of foretelling, second sight. This beautiful maid had a premonition that if Queen Mary slept even one night within the castle walls, she would not live to see the sunrise. Filled with dread, the girl informed her mistress of her fears. Mary listened kindly, as she had developed a friendship with the maid. Mary agreed to allow the girl to watch over her as she slept. The Queen also instructed the maid to alert the guards if any threat were to show itself. Mary trusted the people of Stirling, as they had fought hard to protect her against the advancing army of King Harry VIII when she was younger. Through the long, dark night the maid sat, wrapped up and sitting in a soft chair, she watched over her monarch. Queen Mary fell into a deep sleep, as she had been exhausted after her long journey to Stirling. The young maid too was sleepy. She twisted and turned paced about the room with a terrible fear that she would slip into a slumber and leave her mistress open to some attack. Barring the door and lighting a taper candle, she placed it by the bedside, her idea being that if the queen were to wake during the night she would not fear the darkness. The young maid sat by the candle, but its flickering put the girl into an almost trance-like state. She fought against the heaviness of her eyelids and the tiredness in her bones. Her mind started to work against her. What harm could come to Mary here, she thought. What was there to fear, she contemplated. If she were to only close her eyes for a moment, just a moment, and that she did. After what seemed just mere moments, the maid was forced to open her eyes again. Her eyes began to adjust to the brightness that filled the room. Had the sun rose already, she thought. Also, what was that horrid stench that filled her lungs, she questioned herself. She started to look around the room as she called out to her queen, but her voice was dry and raspy. 
Then all of a sudden she realized what had happened. The sun had not come out and shone through the window of the room. But to her horror, the small taper candle had fallen. The queen's bed, the tapestries and the room was engulfed in flames. Choking from the foul smoke filling the room, she lunged from her chair. She grabbed at her monarch and shook her violently, but Mary did not stir. The girl looked around the room, and with all of her might she dragged the queen from her bed towards the door. Her attempt to move quickly meant that some of her emerald green gown met with the inferno which scorched her dress and her pale flesh which lay beneath. A crash filled her ears, and soldiers broke down the door and carried both her and her mistress to safety. So what happened to Queen Mary and the Highland girl? Queen Mary lived on for another two decades before her life was cut short by an Englishman's axe. Of the girl we know very little. It is feared that she quickly perished from the burns that she received saving her queen. Even her name has sadly been forgotten. She is known only by the colour of the gown she wore that night, the Green Lady. While our story tells of kindness and bravery, she is also feared to be a harbinger of doom, despair and even death. She is believed by some to be paying penance for the mistake that almost cost the life of one of Scotland's most beloved queens. Visitors to Stirling Castle who are seeking about the Green Lady are told that they should be wary as gazing upon her may put their very souls in peril. Our next ghost is that of a murder most foul, the Earl of Douglas. When King James II decided to hold a great feast for his greatest enemy, William, the Earl of Douglas, he caused a great deal of consternation. The lords and ladies of James's court were greatly taken aback by the action. The great dinner took place in the King's own castle at Stirling in 1452. Now Douglas, who was deeply resentful of the power of the Stuart kings and extremely bitter at the murder of his own uncles in the presence of the young James back in Edinburgh Castle many years before, had conspired to murder his king along with the Lord of the Hours. But James said he was prepared. He promised to forgive and forget this threat to his life. Douglas arrived and was entertained with the finest food listened to marvellous musicians and consumed the most intoxicating wines and spirits available in the kingdom. The king even begged the earl to become a friend to the crown. However, the earl refused and was more adamant in his opposition to James. The king, having had enough of diplomatic measures, resorted to a much cruder form of conflict resolution. He had the earl stabbed in through the neck with a halberd. To add insult to injury, the nobleman's body was then tossed out of the nearest window. The guests then returned to their feast. The earl was buried before dawn in an unmarked tomb in the Douglas Gardens. It is said that he rises every night, demanding vengeance upon the king and his accomplices. Fate would have it that King James would not meet a horrid end at the ghostly hands of the Earl of Douglas, but instead be blown to pieces during the Battle of Roxburgh, when his own cannon, nicknamed the Lion, exploded. If you visit the Douglas Gardens, look out. You may come face to face with the angry ghost of the murdered Earl of Douglas. Stirling Castle is a building filled with wonder and history. It has witnessed moments of true joy and certain terror. Those who have lived within its walls have many stories to tell. But are you ready and brave enough to listen? Why not subscribe to our YouTube channel for more spooky videos?